from Dallas, Texas, home of the frozen margarita machine. This is America's official Cinco de Mayo happy hour presented by Visit Dallas and the Margarita Mile. I'm Dean Fearing, chef owner of Fearing's Restaurant at the Ritz Carlton, and <laughs> and I'm Joyner Norte from Beto and Son Restaurant in Dallas, Texas. Thanks for spending your happy hour with us. For all of those that have a drink in their hand like me, cheers. Let's get the Cinco de Mayo started. I tell you, a great margarita starts off this whole happy hour. But everybody knows that a great margarita starts with great tequila. And let me show you how we make our margaritas at the Rattlesnake Bar at Fearings. I'm here with my good friend, Dean Faring at the Rattlesnake Bar on the Margarita Mile. And we're tasting some of the best margaritas in town. In Dallas, we love our margaritas so much, we had to invent a frozen margarita machine just to keep up with the demands. Mariano Martinez decided to create his own frozen margarita machine and change happy hours forever. Genius. Here at Fearings on the Margarita Mile, we still make margaritas by hand, the old fashioned way. Mm. And it all starts with a great tequila. When it comes to tequila, what exactly are you looking for? I'm looking for a little of that vanilla flavor, a little of that pineapple, that big spice taste mm. that gives our tequila and our margaritas that special, special flavor. Now I'm thirsty. Let's make a margarita. I think it's time. We're gonna start with two ounces of our Anejo special barrel, mm. a half a jigger, beautiful natural agave. Mm. Damiano, now you gotta rub the tummy. Yes, always. Always. <laughs> to top it off, fresh lime juice. That is beautiful. Julian, thanks for coming in. There you have it, Dean's Margarita, here at the Rattlesnake Bar on the Margarita Mile. You've gotta come check this out. Salud. Oh, man, that's a good one. <laughs> How delicious was that? So much fun. Dean, let me tell you something. Whenever I drink one of your margaritas at the Rattlesnake Bar, every day feels like Cinco de Mayo to me. But I'm curious, <laughs> what are one of your favorite Cinco de Mayo traditions that you do every Cinco de Mayo? Well, I think it's taking margaritas also to the other step of, how about some different flavors? Watermelon, mm. a little blood orange, mango. I, I like to mess it up too. But let's not forget, we need tacos. When you're having margaritas, you gotta have tacos, man. I completely agree. And it just so happens that this Cinco de Mayo lands on Taco Tuesday. So it just makes it even bigger and even better. Um, but let's uh, get to the next segment where our partners at Univision uh, put together a great video on the traditions of what Cinco de Mayo looks like in Dallas. So let's take a look. Hola mi gente de Dallas, les saluda Raúl Solís Glez de Univision Dallas y estoy muy contento de poder contarles de uno de nuestros más grandes festivales, no solo en Univision, sino también en Dallas. Festival de Mayo por muchos, muchos años, para ser un poco más exactos, por más de 20 años ha traído diversión a toda la comunidad en la ciudad. Y es que es una mezcla de varias cosas que a todos nos gustan. Escuchen, música en vivo, Comida, entretenimiento, juegos para los chicos, premios, entretenimiento y muchísimo más. Univision Radio junto a Noticias 23 se unen para traer esta gran experiencia 360 donde además compañías y empresas muestran sus productos frente a frente con la comunidad. Y lo mejor de todo es completamente gratis. Pudiera decir mucho más, pero ¿por qué no? Les doy aquí una probada de lo que es Festival de Macho. A toda mi gente que nos acompañó esta tarde en el Festival de Mayo. Muchas gracias a 94.1 por invitarnos al Festival de Mayo. Somos la banda Rancho Viejo.
Mucha gente, mucha raza vino a verlos. Los Ángeles Azules. ¿Qué tal? Se ve demasiado divertido, ¿verdad? Pues lo es. Por esa razón sigue siendo el festival al aire libre latino más grande en Texas. Debido a las circunstancias, este mes de mayo no se pudo llevar a cabo, pero esperamos pronto volver y tener más experiencias y más festivales como estas. Ofrecerle a toda la comunidad de Dallas el festival de mayo. Thanks so much, Univision. Cinco de Mayo is one of my favorite holidays. And it's not just the margaritas and the food, but the energy. I absolutely love the energy that people bring when they're in the restaurant and they're having a great time. And, uh, you know, they're singing and they're dancing and they're drinking and they're eating. The whole just fiesta atmosphere is really, for me, Dean, what my favorite part of Cinco de Mayo is. Now, let's check in with Rachel and see what she has going on at the Margarita Mile headquarters. Hey everybody, I'm Rachel here at the Margarita Mile headquarters in Dallas, Texas. Thank you for joining us for America's official Cinco de Mayo happy hour. I hope everyone at home is ready to celebrate with us. I know I am. I'll be checking in throughout this program with all of our friends at home. I've heard that we've got a really ambitious fan who is going to try out this sunburst lime that comes in Mariano, the OG Mariano's Margarita. Let's check out how he's doing in his kitchen. As many of you know, there is a distinct fruit on top of some of the margaritas at the famous Mariano's. It's uh, the famous Mariano's Lime Star. We're not exactly sure how they do it in the restaurant, but I think we've kind of figured it out here pretty close. Okay, so you're just gonna take your knife and you're gonna cut about a fourth to a half of an inch off the thick end of the lime and just kind of slice it off just like that. There you go. And then you're gonna take the big part and you're going to just give it a good little gouge, just like that. And that is where you're gonna slip it on the glass later. So put this part to the side. And then now let's look at the wedge part. You see there's about eight or nine or 10 sections inside the lime. And so what you're going to do is you're gonna have to count every other section and see how there's just this little white part between each sector. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the sharp end of your knife starting all the way at the top and go all the way down that side. Do not cut that, don't cut through that piece right there, okay? So you're just gonna cut all the way to the top and then you're gonna go up across the, the flesh part right there and you're gonna go all the way down this side, still not cutting into the side. Okay, so you've done that section. Now you're gonna skip this section and you're gonna do the exact same thing over again, starting down at the top, being careful not to cut down into that wedge part. And then you're gonna come opposite and do it just like that one more time. Skip this part, so on, so forth. You're starting to get the hang of it. Here we go, all right, skip this little portion right here. And then you're gonna come down here, perfect. Here we go, and then you're just gonna cut right down this side. All right. Now then, just take your, uh, make sure you don't have any pieces still connected out of your cuts, and you're just gonna flip it kind of inside out. Just like that. Perfect, oh, see, it just kind of stayed connected there. That's okay, just disconnected there. All right, so you've got your lemon, uh, I mean, your lime end right here, and you're gonna take um, the thick part and just kind of push it down over the end. Just like that. And it's gonna be tight, it's gonna feel tight. So there you go. And then you're just gonna take that cut that you made right there and put it on the edge of the glass. Are you kidding me? That guy is so professional and it was amazing. I think he could have a job at Mariano's if he needed it. So we have our drinks. Cheers, Dean. Cheers, buddy. Wish I was there to celebrate with you in person, but uh, so in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, I will say I need a little food in me. So coming up, we have a vegan chef. She is called the One Great Vegan, and she is going to teach us how to make a burrito bowl that I guarantee you, you are going to want to see. So take a look. Black bean and beef bowl. 
Great for all people. Black bean and beef bowls. For me and my amigos. Black bean and beef bowls. It's great for all people. Black bean and beef bowls. For me and my amigos. Well, hello, hello. My name is Gabrielle Reyes, and some people call me One Great Vegan. And I am an actress, singer, and chef based in Dallas, Texas. I make colorful home cooked meals on my musical cooking show, The Colorful Home Cooking Show. You can find that online, anywhere, and soon you're gonna be able to find it other places as well. Also, I host a live musical cooking class every Saturday at 1 p.m. And like I said, I'm an actress. I do a lot of film, commercial, TV. You may have seen me somewhere. And that's just a little bit about me. Thank you so much for tuning into my live musical cooking class. I hope y'all enjoy this delicious meal. Black bean and beef bowl, it's great for all people. Black bean and beef bowl, for me and my amigos. Black bean and beef bowl, it's great for all people. Black bean and beef bowl, for me and my amigos. Hello my loves and welcome into my kitchen, into my humble home today. Today we are gonna be making some black bean and beef burrito bowls. Y'all, they are full of plant protein, fiber, nutrients, all these delicious things. And I'm gonna show y'all how quick and easy it is to make a recipe with me, Gabrielle Reyes. Y'all know me as One Great Vegan. So let's get cooking, y'all, and let's get singing. So the first thing we're gonna do is need to cook down those onions and that oil to make those black beans. So what I have here is I have some red onions that I've just diced up and I have some grapeseed oil. And what I did is I just put, popped in a little bit of my grapeseed oil, about one tablespoon, and that's just gonna start everything going and glowing. And then I also have one half of a cup of my diced red onions, y'all. And this is gonna help everything taste fabulous, delicious, flavorful. In fact, y'all, I got a song about it. Cooking is easy and fun when you sing. Onions and oil can make anything. Cooking is easy and fun when you sing. Onions and oil can make anything. Onions and oil can start off any recipe. Onions and garlic, it doesn't really matter what you use. And as long as you have something that's gonna start everything with all that flavor and seep into all those other delicious ingredients. So y'all, like I said, my name is One Great Vegan, which means I eat a bunch of plant-based food, right? So everything we're making today is gluten-free, it's soy-free, it's nut-free, it's vegan, it's gluten-free, it's soy-free, it's nut-free, it's vegan. And you would never know by the taste that's gonna go inside your mouth. So y'all, I have cooked down my onions and my oil in my pot. And the next thing we're gonna do, y'all, is add in some of that minced garlic. You always wanna make sure that you add in your garlic after you add in that chopped up onion. That way it doesn't burn too quickly. So as I add in my garlic, let's just add in those black beans, y'all. There's gonna be tons of fiber, protein, so many delicious nutrients in these beautiful beans right here, y'all. And then you're gonna mix in all your delicious ingredients in your pot. And like I said, y'all, we're gonna go in with the seasoning. So of course, y'all, we gotta add in our seasonings before we let this all cook down. So let's talk about the seasonings we're gonna be using today. Y'all, I am obsessed with smoked paprika. Smoked paprika, hey, hey. She's my girl, I put her in all of my recipes. I'll be adding in about one half of a tablespoon of her right there, right now. And then of course, garlic powder, onion powder. Garlic powder, onion powder. Garlic powder, onion powder. I'll be adding in yet again about one half of a tablespoon. Y'all go in with your seasonings. Seasoning is everything. Seasoning is everything. Well, seasoning is everything when you're making vegan food. When you're making plant-based meals, y'all. Heck, when you're making any kind of food, you 
got to go in with your seasoning. That way people are addicted, going back for more. And I'm gonna show y'all how you balance out all those seasonings and spices, especially when you're using plant protein. So like I said, y'all, we're gonna be adding in that seasoning and that spice. Got my garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika. Garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika. And next, y'all, let's add in a touch of some cumin, just a splash, it's gonna add in a nice earthiness to it. Woo, y'all, fabulous, fresh, and delicious. And then let's just add in a splash of some chili powder just to add in some more dynamic flavor and fabulousness, y'all. All right, so we have our seasonings in there. So I'm just gonna mix that in, and the next spices I'm gonna add in there, y'all, are gonna be that salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, salt and pepper, salt and pepper, salt and pepper. Add in about one half of a tablespoon of your salt and your pepper. This is gonna add in all of that flavor, all of that spice and everything nice. And obviously you can add in as much or as little of the salt and pepper as you like. I'm a salty girl, so I always be going in with the salt. But like I said, depending on what kind of diet you have, whatever it is. All right, y'all, so our beans are ready, y'all. We're just gonna let them cook down while we work on our Beyond Beef. Now, I don't know if y'all have ever tried Beyond Beef, but this brand is fierce, y'all. You would have no idea. Ooh, she is sparkling up today. Hey there, girl, I'll see you. I'm gonna put you right over there, girl. All right, so like I was saying, y'all, this Beyond Beef tastes so fabulous. I have fed it to so many carnivores, so many people who have no idea what vegan, vegetarian, plant-based means, and they had no idea that this stuff is 100% made out of pea protein and plant protein as well. Y'all, this stuff has more fiber in it, more protein in it, more iron in it than regular beef, y'all, and it has 35% less fat in it too. Okay, and with all the seasoning and all the flavor and everything, who wouldn't want to eat this delicious meal? So, like I said, y'all, I'm gonna be using that Beyond Beef, Beyond Beef, gonna saute it down. Beyond Beef, whoa, Beyond Beef, gonna saute it down. Beyond Beef, Beyond Beef, gonna saute it down. Beyond Beef. just like you would with normal beef but instead y'all this is gonna taste so fabulous and be good for your body spirit and your soul okay so let's get that all chopped up and you're just gonna let this sizzle sizzle cook on down sizzle sizzle cook on down but of course y'all I've got to add in a little bit of spice and something nice so let's add in just a splash of some lime juice just to give it some zestiness and then, y'all, I'm going to be adding in that smoked paprika. Hey, 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 Add in that smoked paprika to add in a nice, sultry, delicious, sexy flavor, y'all. And then, like I said, y'all, you're going to brown this like you would brown any kind of other meat product. Y'all, I've been eating this way for about 10 years, plant-based and gluten-free as well, y'all. And listen, you can eat all the things that you want to eat but all you have to do is just figure out the seasoning, the spices, and the textures that you love and that you crave, and turn it into a plant-based dish, y'all. So I'm gonna show y'all how easy it is to get that flavor, that spice, everything you want in the delicious burrito bowl, beefy, beanie, full of delicious goodness, but made out of plants, y'all. So Dean, I know you like to sing in the kitchen, as do I. I'm curious though, what is your favorite kitchen music? What do you sing the most in the kitchen? Well, first of all, I don't know if my cooks and chefs allow me to sing in the kitchen. Uh, that might be a little yikes, but we are always driving hard rock music. I mean, it's good old rock and roll in our kitchen. So, and I think you need that drive just to, get everybody prepping and getting ready for the big dinner hour or the lunch hour. So I could not agree more. I definitely like that high energy music to get me going and uh, that nice, you know, kind of tempo to really keep me 
um, you know, moving as quick as I need to be for, like you said, those crazy rush uh, dinner and lunch. Oh, yeah. I've loved watching and seeing how creative everyone is during these fun, festive holiday times. And Patricio Rivera is going to show us how to create a festive look with flowers you can get at the grocery store that you can make this at home. Hello guys, my name is Patricio Rivera and I am the creative behind Tool 34. Welcome to my build your own table segment. So I was able to get together with Visit Dallas to create this video for you to be able to make your own table for uh, Cinco de Mayo. Um, my version of it, I would say, is a little bit more modern. Uh, modern, clean, and um, more about being able to hang out with your people, you know, not making it like like what people, like the stereotypical type of what people have in their perspective about Cinco de Mayo. So, uh, one of the pointers I wanted to just um, give you is follow the lines on your table. For example, make sure that all plates are facing each other, you know. Um, another thing is work in threes. I always do like threes to create focal points, um, create a low layer with the flowers to make sure that you can see people through the table. Um, and then, yeah, have fun with it. Add a lot of color. You know, I think the Cinco de Mayo is all about adding color to your life more than anything. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Thank you to HG Supply for our margarita. <laughs> wow, that looked great and so beautiful. It did, and I don't know about you, Dean, but I could use a refill. So why don't we make ourselves another delicious margarita and let's take a break, but we'll see you in the few. I hope everybody's enjoying your drink tonight on America's official Cinco de Mayo happy hour. I know I am. We're sending our cheers from us to you. enjoying your time at home by getting out and enjoying the sunshine. I know I am. I've definitely seen this chalk craze that's been happening around with everyone sending positive vibes and our fans are no different. Check out some of their work. Drink down! I wish we had slow motion replay for that one. 
Back to you guys. Wow, that takes me back. I remember when my sister, when she was little, played hopscotch, but I don't think she had a margarita in her hand. <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> To all of those that are joining us live, we'd love to know how you're celebrating this amazing holiday. So just let us know in the comment section so we can get some more ideas of how to celebrate ourselves. I understand that some of our Margarita Mile fans are having a little trivia challenge. Hey friends, how are you doing? Hey, hey, hey how are you doing? Good, happy Cinco de Mayo, cheers. 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 Are y'all ready for some trivia? Let's do it. Yeah. How well, you know your margarita Always. facts. The first one's going to be pretty. <laughs> so tell me, what year do you think the frozen margarita machine was invented? Sorry. Okay, let's see your answers. Let's show them. 75, 70, mm -hmm. 71. I am shocked by how close. Carla, you're the winner. It's 1971. Almost 50. What? You know what that means? That you two drink, Brittany and Leanne. It's okay. I'll Darn. Okay, how about this? We love the State Fair of Texas, the great State Fair. True or false? The State Fair of Texas's fried foods once included a fried margarita. I don't know how they do that, but I'm pretty sure I would eat it or drink it. I don't know. Sounds amazing. All right, let's see your answers. Damn. Oh, false. True. Carla. <laughs> you got the last one right. No, of course there was a frozen the fried margarita at the state fair. Did you eat it or drink it? <laughs> I think you ate it. I eat it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, here's the multiple choice. I'm gonna try to make it a little easier for you. On average, Americans consume how many margaritas? per hour, 15,000, 95,000, 100,000, or 185,000. You ready? Let's see it. 95, 95, 100. Y'all are way off. We love, love, love our margaritas. 185,000 per hour consumed in the United States. I have per hour? Crazy. Holiday. Per wow. hour. I have to believe that Cinco de Mayo accounts for a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's one. <laughs> so these last questions, which of these celebrities do not have a tequila brand? George Clooney, Nick Jonas, Justin Timberlake, or David Beckham? You ready? All right, let's see it. Nick Jonas, Justin Timberlake. Beckham. Oh, you're the only one who got it right, Carla. David Beckham is the only one who does not have a tequila brand. I was guessing. Oh, girls. Oh, oh, so might we add that Mick is from where? He's Our, from North Texas. That's right. He is. He's a local boy. Well, thank you girls for hanging out with me and doing some margarita trivia. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Cinco de Mayo. Love you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Dallas is exactly what you think it is, and so much more. So come see this, feed that, eat here, and ride there to quickly discover the many sides of Dallas, where the art is eye-catching and celebrities are larger than life. From the jaw-dropping to the hair-raising, you really can do it all in Dallas. Get the most from your getaway and plan your trip at visitdallas.com. Welcome back and welcome to America's official Cinco de Mayo happy hour right here in Dallas, Texas. And I hope everybody is having just as good a time as Julian and I are. And here's cheers again, buddy, to a yes. great time right now. Absolutely. Dean, anytime I'm with you, it's a great time. So Dean, you know this very well, but I'll share this with the rest of the crew. Dallas is the home of the first margarita machine invented by Mariano Martinez 
and it is in the Smithsonian Museum right next to Julia Child's kitchen, which definitely means a lot for us as chefs, as I'm sure, Dean. And you know what? I did not know that. That's amazing. <laughs> well, now you know. <laughs> so let's talk about the Margarita Mile. It is a collection of Dallas's best and brightest margaritas that the city has to offer. And if you haven't had your own Margarita Mile experience, I highly recommend you download the app right now to get started on your Margarita Mile journey. And it's not just a one and done kind of deal. You visit all of these restaurants with their great taste, their different cultures and different foods. And there's 16 all together that you can try and keep trying. And it just keeps you coming back. I completely agree. I love the colorful sangria popsicle that's at the rustic. Uh, I love obviously my liquid nitrogen margarita. And one of my favorite tasting of course is yours Dean at the Rattlesnake Bar at Fairings. I absolutely love your take on the margarita by adding Damiana liqueur. One of my favorite liqueurs. I think you absolutely nailed that one. Well, it's a great secret ingredient, but I tell you, like us all, it keeps people coming back and enjoying more and more of these great margaritas. It really does. And for those of you that don't know, this is something that Dean taught me, but actually one of the first margaritas was actually invented with Damiana liqueur, not the orange liqueur or triple sec that we commonly use today. Damiana was one of the original official margarita kind of ingredients. So if you want to make it just like the OGs did back in the day, definitely recommend you try <laughs> Damiana in your margarita. Well put, brother. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on the Margarita Mile, make sure you download the app because when you download the app, it gives you the ability to check in. And when you check into the locations that you're out, you have the ability to win prizes by enjoying margaritas on the app. I don't know a better way to enjoy margaritas than to be at a place checking in on your phone and getting prizes at the same time. You can't beat it, really. It is so much fun. And it's so much fun to be with your friends and experience all of this. Absolutely. And we have to be honest, everything in Texas is obviously bigger. So it's definitely more than a mile. However, all of these restaurants are very conveniently located, very close to each other. And the ones that are further away are in great neighborhoods where you can experience different cultures like Deep Ellum and the vibes and the music scene, the beautiful scenery at Trinity Groves, and obviously the uh, beautiful bustle of Uptown where your restaurant is located. Julian, everything, as you know, is bigger in Texas. And I understand we have a few friends that are trying to do their own lime garnish. Let's see how they're doing. So we're starting it after the cheers? Yeah, yes. after the Okay. So I'm get salt and go. Oh wait, cheers! Cheers! Oh, cheers! Cheers! Mmm. 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 Okay. My, mine doesn't have a pretty center, like the other. No, one. either Kelsey. Yeah, the dude in the video had a very defined center. Yeah, yeah right? Really nice. Mine's all wonky and askew. He must have a lime guy. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, he's got a, he's got a lime guy, lime. for sure. Okay, but turning my lime inside out is kind of a, a disaster. Let me see. <laughs> It's a hot lose? Mine looks like a kindergarten art project gone wrong. Oh, mine too. It's bad. Boom! Oh. Oh. Boom! Oh! Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened to mine. It was too thin at the bottom. The first one. <laughs> I knew I got it too. Mine looks like a hat. There's, oh, it's nice with your little graham crafter. Here's our presentation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I like the line. Kelly, great. No, no, awesome. Woo. Awesome. Now we can actually drink this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
oh, that wasn't so bad. I thought a lot of them were really trying hard. And hey, it could have been worse. Now, Dean, you showed me how to make your delicious margarita at the Rattlesnake Bar at Fairings. And I'd love to come show you how we do ours at Beto and Son at Trinity Groves, the liquid nitrogen margarita. Now listen, it isn't just liquid nitrogen. It's the coolest liquid nitrogen ever, brother. Well, coming from you, Dean, that really does mean a lot. So let's go and uh, check it out. We're here on the Margarita Mile, and when you sample the cocktails, you'll see the drink has evolved in many ways since the very beginning. When it comes to the margarita, presentation is key. Julian, in the modern Dallas Mexican joints, presentation is everything. From food to decor, that's why Bon Appetit named Dallas 2019 Restaurant City of the Year. Dallas is home to astoundingly beautiful margaritas, like the Maximum Margarita at Cafe Herrera. Or the over-the-top Remy Rita at The Rustic. To my absolute personal favorite, the Liquid Nitrogen Margarita here at Beto & Son. This margarita sounds crazy. It's like a science experiment. I think you need to show me how you put this together. Let's get started. Simple, pure lime juice, pure agave. Perfect. We've got some orange liqueur, a delicious tequila. I decided to add one more ingredient, liquid nitrogen. It's negative 320 degrees and cold enough to freeze alcohol. And that's what makes this super special. Just all of those ingredients, not diluted at all. A bunch of really delicious pure flavor. Quite a unique texture for a margarita, right, Dean? Unbelievable. Looks great on your Instagram page, too. Liquid nitrogen Beautiful. margarita. Another great margarita from the Margarita Mile. There you go. Delicious. I love all those flavors. Julian, that's so cool. And when I was there, I could see the reaction, how people could really just love that whole smoke, all of that going on. But then that incredible flavor of your margarita is outstanding. Thank you, Dean. You know, <clears throat> parents, when you're, when, when you're little, they say, don't play with your food. And well, I guess I just didn't listen, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's time for a little music, and we have Jason and Michael Castro from the Castro Band that's going to be performing live later on. But right now, we're going to see their video called Forever Texas that is filmed right here in Dallas, Texas. So let's take a look. Heartbeat, 
Wow, what a fun, catchy tune. Dallas is really an amazing place. And Dean, I can see that music got you thinking. Sure did, but sometimes when I drink margaritas, I feel like dancing. I know what you mean. My dad always said that the best recipes always start by adding wine or tequila to the chef. And at my restaurant at Beto and Son, we have salsa dancing on our patio. Uh, do you know how to salsa, Dean? You know what? I think you're going to teach me. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, for me, I I, I'm not, not very good yet. unless I got some tequila in me. And we've got a little bit of tequila in us, so I might be able to teach you a thing or two. <laughs> Perfect. Just a few steps is all I need. Yeah, but really, there's a guy named Saul who's amazing. I mean, he makes salsa dancing look like just the most beautiful performing art I've ever seen. So I am extremely uh, excited to share this next piece with everybody. It's a salsa lesson uh, done by the same teacher that teaches salsa le lessons at Beto and Son on Wednesday nights when we do our salsa night. So let's see if he can show us a few moves. This is Salvador from alphamedwaydancestudio.com and I am super excited to be part of this virtual Cinco de Mayo celebration. Thank you, Visit Dallas and Margarita Mal for inviting me to be a part of this. Now, you know it's not a party if there's no dancing, so I'm here to put the P on party with some salsa dancing. Wepa! So get ready and we're going to learn the basic steps to salsa. Uh, we're about to get started with the lesson and today... I have Haley who's gonna be assisting us in class. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to do the rhythm, which is a quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. So we're gonna start with the left leg and we're just gonna go quick, quick, slow. And then you're gonna keep your right foot up, but keep it connected uh, to the floor. And now we're gonna do the right side, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. Now let's just keep it going. We're gonna go quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put numbers to it. Where it's gonna be one, two, three, we pause on the four, and we also pause on the eight. So it's five, six, seven, pause, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three. Now we're gonna do half a turn to the right. One, two, three, five, six, seven. And you just do it by continuing your marching step. So now we're gonna do that to the left, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three. Turn to the right. Here we go. First. One. So this is going to count it for us, all right? So it's going to make it so much easier. And then the loudest part is always Ready. your one. And here we go. One, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, and three. And now we're going to do five, the right six, turn. Seven. Take your time. One, two, three, half a turn. Five, six, seven. And then half a turn. One, two, three. Now let's five, go to the six, left. Seven. One, two, three, same. Same thing. Eba. And turn to the right. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Now let's go to five, the left. Six, Here we go. One, two, three, five, six, seven. So one, now what two, we're gonna three, do, we're gonna do a five, side step six, together and it's gonna one, start two, on the three, one. Five, let's go. Six, so we're gonna go side together, side together. See, I don't move. I step out to the side and then I bring it back. Side together. Side together, side together. But I am stepping three times, right? One, two, three, five, six, seven. So it's a side step together, side step together. One, two, three. And you can add body movement to that. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three. In place. Back to marching. One, two, three. Doing great, doing great. Now you're really celebrating. Let's go. Right turn. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. One, two, three. Now let's go to the left, to the left. One, two, three. Five, okay, six, perfect. One, so two, now three, the next step is going to be the basic six, step. It's just like the side together, but now it's going to be a forward together. So watch. So I'm going to do a little step forward, forward, and then you bring it back together. Let's do that again. So it's a forward together, and then we're going to start with the right doing a back together. So you're going back together. So now let's put numbers to that. So it's a one, two, three, five, six, seven. It's forward together, back together. And musica, mi gente. Let's try that with the music. Here we go. Where's the one? One, two, three, five, six, seven. 
One, two, three. Notice the accent of the music. Always the loudest part. Five, six, seven. The trumpet, right? Let's start with the marching in place. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. Let's start to the right. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Left turn. Five, six, seven. One, two, three. Let's go side step. Five, six, seven. Keep the step small. Small step. One, two, three. Basic step. Forward together. Back together. Side step. Oh, hey, we're back. I hope you guys didn't catch any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, it's going to take me a little while to learn those steps, but I tell you, there is a true art to salsa dancing that I absolutely love. Mm, I completely agree, and I don't think I will ever look that good. <laughs> so it's a good thing we know how to cook, huh? <laughs> I think we have something to fall back on. So let's check on Rachel at the Margarita Mile headquarters and see what's going on. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. I heard people out there are doing some really fun things with their pets on the Cinco de Mayo. Let's check out what they're doing. I've heard something about pet margaritas. Meet Martin. He is a nine month old Westie puppy that came home last fall. I didn't want him to miss out on all the fun with the margarita mile. So today we're making him a doggy margarita. Check it out. So here's everything I got on my Target run. I got some plastic margarita glasses because actual glass and dogs don't mix. I got some chicken broth to make the ice cube, the base of the margarita, and obviously a nice cube tray because I didn't have one and so that's I grabbed it. all my ingredients which was basically just a can opener and opened it like this so it's open on the front and then I left a little bit for air back here and then I'm just gonna pour this in and then this goes into the fridge for two hours Sure does look like those dogs are enjoying that. And I know that my dog would really enjoy a margarita like that. I'm sure he would. Uh, however, I don't know if uh, we would enjoy it as much as maybe the burrito bowl that one great vegan has for us. So why don't we go check that out? All right, so our beef is gonna cook on down. And while our beef is cooking down, I wanna show y'all what I'm gonna do to my rice. So I have some cooked rice here. Use whatever rice you want to use. Brown rice, white rice, quinoa too. It don't matter what kind of grain you use. And then pour over some plant-based butter. The butter I'm using today, y'all, is gonna be Earth Balance. It's made out of olive oil. So like I was saying, with the beef, y'all, they have millions of different things that you can do with olive oil, with coconut, with cashew, with all different kinds of plant-based items, y'all. And the butter's up. Y'all, you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know. 
<laughs> so let's mix in that butter into our rice. And this is gonna make it just sexy and delicious, y'all. I mean, who doesn't love butter in a meal? So I'm mixing in my butter, my beef and my beans are cooking down. And then I don't know if y'all ever used tahini, but I love the flavor of it. I love that there's a little bit of lemon zestiness in there. And I also love like that sweetness, that saltiness, just everything in there. So I'm gonna be adding in just a touch of this, just to add in more seasoning and spice. Seasoning and spices, whoa. Add in all that flavor, y'all. This is gonna be a beautiful Cinco de Mayo up in my house, okay? Because your girl is feasting today. And look at that. Ooh, and also, y'all, sometimes I'll add in some fresh chopped cilantro just to give it a little bit of freshness, some more delicious flavor in there as well. Also, if your rice doesn't have any salt or pepper on there, you can already add that in if you want. Mine, I already added some salt and pepper earlier, so I'm not worried about that. So y'all, look at that. Look at our beef cooking on down. Wow, she is beautiful. Beyond beef, beyond beef, beyond beef, beyond beef. Oh man, I love this brand so much, y'all. Seriously, they gifted me with a bunch of delicious products and I've been using them every day. Me and my husband Ace, we are addicted, okay? And it looks like our beef is just about ready. So now that I have my rice, my beef and my beans. The other thing I wanna show y'all how to make is this lime crema. Super, super simple and obviously fabulous, flavorful as all get out. So what I have here, y'all, is some soy-free veganese, soy-free veganese. So this is mayonnaise, y'all, but it doesn't have any eggs in it because your girl does not eat eggs these days, okay? So what I'm gonna be doing is adding in this veganaise right here and this is also an olive oil based product i'm just going to add it in here y'all just like that and then i'm going to add in some more of my lime juice just a splash this is going to be limey and delicious i'm going to swiggle it all over our beloved bowl Ooh, yeah come on drip in there baby drip in there there we go i'm going to mix all that in get it nice and creamy and fabulous just like that and then y'all Let's add in that seasoning and spices. Whoa! So y'all see, I have a big jar here of what? This is nutritional yeast, y'all. And if you have never eaten nutritional yeast, get yourself some. This is basically vegan gold. I mean, you can make this into mac and cheese, cheddar cheese, any kind of cheese, Parmesan cheese. It don't matter. Sometimes I use it in Alfredo too. Alfredo's, it don't matter what you use it in, y'all. I'm gonna be adding in some of this to add in a nice little layer of cheesiness and deliciousness. And then, y'all, garlic powder, onion powder. Garlic powder, onion powder. Let's add in that garlic powder and that onion powder. Adding in more seasoning. Y'all, this is gonna be fabulous. And then, of course, y'all, Whisk it up, whisk it up, whisk that, mm -mm. Whisk it up, whisk it up, whisk it up, whisk it up. Look at that, oh my. Y'all, I'm gonna have to get a taste right now. So good, so limey and delicious. The last thing I wanna add in there, y'all, is a little bit of some salt and maybe a little bit of pepper. It depends on however you like your crema. For me, be adding in about one teaspoon of some salt and then just a splash of pepper just to break up that saltiness as well. Oh, y'all, this is gonna be flavorful, fun, and fabulous. All right, mix her up just like that. Look at that, y'all. Boom, lime crema. There we go. All right, y'all, so it looks like all of our elements are ready to go. The other things we have here are some pepitas. I'm gonna be using those. Those are gonna add a nice little crunchiness and then some jalapenos too. That's gonna be fabulous. So y'all, as you can see, I have my bowl here and I always like to add in some greenery into whatever I'm eating. Even if that's nachos, y'all, I'll throw some spinach on it because your girl needs some greenery, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna be adding into my beautiful black bean and beef bowl is some seasoned rice. <laughs> Add in that seasoned rice just right there on the corner. And I like to always make my plate kind of pretty, just like that. 
There we go. Oh, and then let's add in that beef, y'all. All seasoned and cooked browned to perfection. Put that over there in that corner. Woo! Beyond beef, beyond beef, beyond beef, beyond beef. I love it. Oh, y'all. And I'm going to be powered through the day with this meal, okay? Look at these black beans, black beans, black beans, black beans, black beans, black beans, black beans. Look at these black beans. I'm going to put them right over here next to my zesty rice. Y'all, the seasoning, the flavor, everything in there is going to be fabulous. Y'all, look at this. We're not even done yet. We're not even done yet. All right, let's add on some of that cream. Let me get a spoon out. Spoon that cream all around. Yes, girl. Let's see. Ooh. Yes. Black bean and beef bowl. It's great for all people. Black bean and beef bowl. For me and my amigos. And then let's add on some pepitas. Just sprinkle those on over. Y'all, this is looking. Oh, she is looking fabulous, fresh, and fierce. Let's add on some jalapenos. Y'all know I love a little bit of spice. And there it is, y'all. Black bean and beef bowl. It's great for all people. Black bean and beef bowl. For me and my amigos. And y'all are my amigos. Thank you so much for tuning in, y'all. Your girl's gonna get a bite before we dip out of this cooking class. We get some of that beef in there, some of that rice. Get some of that black bean too. Woo, y'all. I hope y'all saw how simple and easy it is to make this wonderful plant-based dish full of fabulous flavor, protein, everything. All right, let's take it. Mm. Oh, the, y'all, the flavor is hitting, okay? The beef seasoned with that little bit of smokiness, mm. the rice with a little bit of lemon, and liminess in there. We all let me get some more of this. Thank you. Just got my margarita. Dallas is exactly what you think it is, and so much more. So come see this, feed that, eat here, and ride there to quickly discover the many sides of Dallas, where the art is eye-catching and celebrities are larger than life. From the jaw-dropping to the hair-raising, you really can do it all in Dallas. Get the most from your getaway and plan your trip at visitdallas.com. That looks so good. All the depth of flavor with all those spices, fantastic. But also cooking and singing at the same time, that is something of a talent, I have to say. Julian, you do vegan in the restaurant, right? We do. Um, actually, one time I was in LA uh, on a little food tour, as I'm sure you take all the time. And I went to a Mexican restaurant with a friend of mine, and it just so happened that the whole restaurant was completely vegan. And I remember thinking like, man, but what about my fajitas and just all of those things that we enjoy. And I remember leaving there going, I really didn't miss the meat. And so I felt challenged to create a menu with everybody's Mexican favorites, enchiladas, tacos, uh, fajitas, that would make them feel the same way I felt leaving that vegan restaurant of, I didn't even miss the meat. I enjoyed everything and I got my Mexican craving. So that was kind of the inspiration behind our vegan menu at Beto and Son. Well, you know, I've had a vegetarian vegan menu now at Fearings for over 10 years and it is so wow. popular. Uh, you are so far ahead time. of your time. Well, I've always felt that we needed something like that because I think for the person who may be traveling, you can't eat a steak every night. It's, it's yeah. crazy. So, you know, I think a lot of people want to eat healthier, eat lighter. And it's been a big, big response for us. Everybody enjoys it. Mm. 
That's awesome. Yeah, we definitely were very surprised how successful we were. I remember our first week we sold out every night and we couldn't believe it. <laughs> so wow. I definitely, yeah, I definitely understand what you're saying. And I wish I had thought of it 10 years ago, <laughs> like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you made a couple of those dishes when you were working with me. <laughs> I did. I did. I do. I do remember making them. I wish that it had clicked in my head at the time and I could have just brought it over to Beto's as soon as we opened and it didn't take me years to finally figure out like, hey, you know what? <laughs> you know a thing or two over there. <laughs> now, I love the classic margarita, but sometimes you have to push the envelope and create something new that nobody's seen before, like the liquid nitrogen margarita. And that's just what I love about the Margarita Mile. You can explore all the flavors of Dallas and different diverse neighborhoods and experience the different cultures that we know and love as Dallas, Texas. Up next, Chef Nico from Mesa Maya teaches us how to make a mango margarita. Mm. And that's what I love, kind of spicing it up, making it different. A different kind of margarita is a great margarita. I couldn't agree more. My name is Nico Sanchez, executive chef of Mesa Maya. And today we're going to be making a mango margarita from scratch. Mesa Maya has such creative drinks, and I really like their avocado margaritas. How unique is that? And right next door is La Ventana, which is a festive patio that has such a great feel for a Dallas spring day. Mm, just talking about tacos and margaritas reminds me of when we were drinking tacos, when we were drinking tacos, when we were eating tacos and drinking margaritas at my restaurant. You remember that, Dean? Oh my goodness, I was so hungry that I was just over there scarfing down taco after taco. And that charred pineapple, oh, was the best. I'm right there with you. You know, some people say pineapple doesn't belong on pizza, but I will say it absolutely belongs in an Al Pastor taco. Absolutely. Speaking of spring days, that was a beautiful day that we were on that patio, and it was a beautiful day for tacos. So why don't we take a look at those tacos? Dean and I are here on our favorite mile, the Margarita Mile, where Dallas showcases its best and brightest margaritas. You know what I love about La Ventana's frozen margaritas? Their margaritas have this chili salt rim, and it gives you that little bit of heat along with that nice, cold freshness. You know, Dean, on this beautiful, breezy, and boozy day, you know what goes great with your amazing margarita? I can only imagine. Killer tacos like they got here at Taqueria La Ventana. And I'd love to show you my version of killer tacos over at Beto and Son in my own kitchen. Let's go. So one of the things I love about margaritas is how well they pair with Mexican food. So many good flavor combinations. It's absolutely perfect. And this is an al pastor. Al pastor. So we have some beautiful, nice pork shoulder that we have marinated, roasted. We like to char our pineapple. It just adds another layer of flavor. And of course, we got to throw in some fresh chopped cilantro in there. I think it makes the taco. I couldn't agree more. All right, Dean. These are for you. So match made in heaven, right? Mm. And let me tell you, it's the perfect patio food with the perfect patio drink in the perfect patio city. And the Margarita Mile is filled with great patios. So relax, kick back, and enjoy this magical Texas city. Sometimes it's the simple things in life, right? It is. Is that the perfect patio? And is that the perfect patio weather we're having right now? So we would love to hear from you in comments if you are outside 
on a patio or your front porch or back porch. We would love to hear from you. Now, Dean, I know we've got some amazing drinks and some food here with us, but maybe we should do a little more dancing. I feel like I've got a little more tequila in me. So uh, <laughs> if you think we should, I say we uh, let Saul take it away. Hey, this is Salvador with Alpha Midway Dance Studio here with Haley. In this segment, we're going to teach you how to do partner work. And I also want to thank Chef Julian. And I cannot wait to be back dancing on Wednesday nights at Beto and Sons. They're at Trinity Grove. Okay, are you ready? Let's get ready to rumble with some salsa partner work. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get started with the partner work. Uh, we're going to start by just doing the marching step again. I'm going to ask for my, ha uh, my partner's hands. And let's go. So we're going to go one, two, three. Five, six, seven. We're just marching in place. Five, six, seven. Count it with us. Two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. So after you do that like a hundred times, then we can move on to the basics. So make sure to pause the video as many times. Practice that part until that rhythm comes out very nice and clean. So now, basic step. For the ladies, it's going to start with the back step together. For the guys, it's a forward step together. So watch. We go one, two, three. So for ladies, back step together. For the gentlemen, forward step together. Let's go. So we go one, two, three, and then the opposite, right? So for the guys, we go back on five. Ladies forward, five, six, seven. And let's put that together. So we go one, two, three, five, six, seven, and a one, two, three five six seven okay good so now we have the basic steps so now what i want you to do is the side step so now we're going to start with the left leg all transitions happen on the one right now at this level when you're starting out so now we're going to go side step one two three five six seven let's do two of each one two three five six let's go basic step basic one two three five six seven one two three five six seven okay and let's go ahead and move on so how do we tell the ladies that we're gonna turn so we're gonna give them a preparation how do we do the preparation we bring our hand up so notice it's like a little high five so we're actually gonna call it a high five so when i say high five we're gonna high five but then we're gonna get stuck together like magnets so our hand is gonna stay connected and then the ladies, guys, we're going to turn the ladies, but make sure you're just leading it. Don't do it for her. So I'm just going to kind of do a little swipe across the face here, and then I'm going to let her turn on her own. So she's going to complete the turn on her own, and then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to open the door. So guys, I bring that elbow up. There's your window. So then you're going to turn just like we did earlier. One, two, three, and then you're going to finish it. Five, six. Notice what I do on my five, six, seven, the hand drops five six seven and then there i am back to starting position so we're gonna go high five on three ready from the basic step and we go one two three we turn her five six seven then the guys one two three keep turning five six basic step one two three now give me a side step five six seven one two three back to the basic six seven basic first let's go ahead and give her the turn so let's go high five on three one two high five five six seven guys we start one two three five six basic so i'm gonna ask for her shoulder she's gonna open her arm just like this i go to her shoulder so let me show you this angle here so i go to her shoulder blade which is up here and then the ladies, you're going to connect the elbow first, and then you go to her shoul uh, our shoulder blade as well. So that's what the lo this looks like. For this, and I just put my hand up here. Ladies, you're just going to come in and connect right here. So now we're going to do a basic step here. So let's do the marching step first. We go one, two, three. So let's go basic step. One, two, three, five, six, seven. And let's try this one. So where's the one? One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Let's start open position. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, basic. Five, six, seven. One, two, three, side step, side step. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, basic. Basic, 
Let's go to fourth position, but take your time. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Hey, Jules, I think I'm getting this down now. I think you are too. It's that or it's the tequila, one of the two. <laughs> and I think my hips are actually getting a little looser now. So I can do those salsa swings. I think Saul would be proud. I really do. Um, <laughs> and I'm really excited to uh, announce our next guest. Uh, I, when I think about happy hour, I automatically think about live music. And they just go so well together, like chips and salsa or lime and tequila and a margarita. So I'd love to introduce Jason and Michael Castro from Dallas that are going to perform a few of their songs for us. So grab your margarita and enjoy. Thanks, chefs. We're so happy to be here at America's official Cinco de Mayo Happy Hour, hosted by Margarita Mile and Visit Dallas. We're Castro. We're coming to you live from Dallas, and this first song is one that we wrote about our great city. It's called Forever Texas. Life is short and time is borrowed. Let's live these good old days Raise your glass and feel your heartbeat Don't leave this place the same I know that I'll never be alone And I'm proud to have this place to call my own You don't want to mess with this city I've been blessed with The closest thing to heaven I've known no matter where I go, I still be young and wild and reckless. My heart will be forever Texas. This next song is the first one we ever wrote together. It's called Rock and Roll.
You got to know Hey, little darling I ain't never gonna let you go Hey, pretty lady I ain't never gonna let you go I ain't never gonna let you go You be the rock and I'll be the rock What great tunes. Jason and Michael are so good and so talented. And the songwriting is so superb. And what I love is they're here with us on the Margarita Mile Happy Hour. I completely agree. In this next half hour, Chef AQ is going to join us to say hello. Uh, she's extremely talented, and Bon Appetit thinks so as well. Uh, but right now, we're going to kick it back to Rachel to see how she's doing at the Margarita Mile headquarters. Everyone's got their favorite Cinco de Mayo traditions. Let's go ahead and check in with some fans at home to see how they're celebrating. For today's margarita, we're going to use a little bit of Patron our margarita mix. This one's a organic one, and a little bit of triple set. One ounce of our Patron tequila. One ounce of our triple set. That's good. And then we're going to have two ounces of our lime juice margarita mix. And a little ice in our shaker. Sometimes on the rocks margaritas, they just get so diluted based off the ice. So um, I've got a quick little recipe for some margarita plungers, as I like to call them. And it's really, really simple. Just um, four popsicles. It, it's going to make just enough for four pops for four people. So all you're going to do is you're just going to do two thirds a cup of orange liqueur. There we go. And then um, I just pick this up. This limeade mix at the store last time I was there. And then I'm gonna add two thirds a cup of that as well. Perfect. And then I am just going to quickly pour those into my popsicle mixture. Actually, I'm gonna give it a quick little whisk first, just to make sure, you know, never can be too careful. And then I'm just gonna pour those right into my little popsicle molds just to the line because as um, liquid freezes, it expands. And so you wanna put just shy of where you're supposed to fill the top to. So just gonna pour these in here like this. Oh, these are gonna be great, I can't wait to have them. All right, just right here, and just a little shy on that one, but that's yeah, okay. All right, and then I'm just gonna put the little plungers in and then get them over here into the freezer. Here we go. 
wow, that is really creative. A popsicle and a margarita, two of my favorite things in one. Back to you guys. You know, some people really know their tequila. So Rachel, let's see how some people are doing at home. We're tasting tequila. Tequila. Nice testing tequila. Yes. Fill it right in the throat. Just smooth. Just yeah? Smooth. My ears are One warming to 10. up. Chilled. I say a 10. Oh, that's high. Tequila number two. Sip it, don't shoot. Uh -huh. A little more kick than the last one. Okay. Number one. It tastes better. I like this one better, actually. It doesn't have that. This one's sweeter. Mm -hmm. I give it almost a tea. Oh, y'all are generous. This tequila. one's, I mean, this one's good. I'm like still sipping it. That's tequila number three. It's smooth, but it's not sweet. Still like number two. So, okay, number two still your favorite. Still Interesting. Yeah. So far, number one feels stronger. And number three, this one, it's got good flavor and it's got a kick to it. Okay, on a scale of one to ten. Mm. This one, eight. Eight. Okay, seven. Oh, wow. mm, getting critical. Oh, it's got four. <laughs> mm, Number three, this one, it's got a kick to it. Okay, on a scale of one to ten. Mm. This one, eight. Okay, seven. Oh, wow. Getting critical. Oh, I've got mm, four. Talk about some goosebumps going on here. It's Reposado Blanco. The Blanco, I think they're probably good. Smoother. If I'm gonna drink, I was gonna mix it with the margarita. I'm gonna probably use either one. Okay. I'd give this one an eight. Y'all are really it was generous. strong, though. It was well, my good. taste and my what I like to drink, I guess I'm gonna give this a seven. Okay. You can take your mask off, and I'm gonna tell you what order you drink. This is the first one you had. Mm. Yes. It's also the cheapest yes. one of the bunch. This is number two, Cuervo. Are you serious? Yep, that's that the one the you guys like the most. Yeah. Uh huh. This is the third one. That's the one I bought in Mexico. That's nice. And then number four, which is the most expensive one, and you guys liked it the least. That was the seven. <laughs> that was the seven. I think you like the Cuervo the best. That one. Yeah. I did. I like this one, and I've had this. One. I like these two. Yeah. Make my margaritas. Uh huh. Yeah, I can't believe we tipped the little Jose Cuervo. Bye, Margarita Mile. Thank, Thank you. you. It was fun. Ooh, that was a little tough, but I've got to give them an A for effort. Trying tequila is never wrong. Back to you guys. Do you know who really loves Dallas? And I mean really loves Dallas? And was the hit star of the great show called Dallas that we all loved for years and years? Yes, we're talking about Linda Gray. And what a wonderful, sweet person, totally genuine. And she was at our farmer's market right here in Dallas. So let's take a look. So nice to be back in Dallas. It's a little bit different than the original TV show. You don't see anyone riding a horse, do you? Dallas has an internationally inspired dining scene and the Margarita Mile. Did you know that the frozen margarita was actually invented here in Dallas? Just a few more hours until dinner at Bullion. <gasps> Whatever will I wear? Hey, that was great. Really well done. And what a big compliment for Linda Gray to be at our farmer's market. And I served the whole cast of Dallas back in the 80s when they all stayed at the mansion on Turtle Creek through the summer for about six weeks. Every summer the show was on. So getting to know the staff and getting what they like to eat was always a charm. And such a nice group of people, but Linda was always well-mannered toward the fact that she said, Dean, serve me whatever you want. And I always loved that. Dallas is filled with friendly people. Our Texas hospitality is legendary. And to be honest, we miss you. 
We know traveling is tough right now, but the safety of our visitors, friends, and family is our highest priority. So we can deal with this separation anxiety, and when the time comes, Dallas will be ready to welcome you back. We're proud of our home, and we want every visitor to feel safe and at home here too. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon in our great city, Dallas, Texas. Everybody, welcome back. We are still here celebrating America's official Cinco de Mayo happy hour, and we feel honored to be spending this time with you, whether you're in your home with your loved ones or out in a beautiful park uh, having a picnic. We are just happy that you are spending uh, your time with us. And I hope everybody is having as much fun as we are. And we have another friend that joined us on the Margarita Mayo. Chef AQ from the amazing restaurant, Jose on Lovers, one of my favorite spots to get a delicious margarita and her delicious tacos and ceviche as well. AQ, how are you doing? I'm good. You know, we've been keeping really busy in the mornings with uh, feeding the frontliners and then a uh, pretty, pretty good stream of business for uh, curbside pickup and takeout. So it's been, it's been uh, quite the transition from what we're used to, but we've adapted pretty well. We walked over the other Saturday and had your breakfast tacos, which were absolute. Oh, nice, nice. I was really good. <laughs> yeah, I, I got one of each and we just mowed them down. So. Nice. <laughs> nice, that's easy to do. It's nice to have you in the neighborhood. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, it's nice to be in a, in a nice, quiet neighborhood. You both are helping so much with the frontline workers. Hey, can you both kind of just give us a little talk on what you're doing and, and how's it really working for you? Hey, Q, I'll let you go first and I'll, I'll pick up after yeah, you. Yeah, um, so we were approached probably five days after the closure by our really nice and generous landlord to try to figure out, you know, we had laid off about 50 employees and he wanted to figure out how we could painfully employ them and do something good by it because we knew people weren't coming into the dining room. So he kind of came up with a plan. We came up with a plan to um, feed frontline workers. We've gotten about $150,000 donated. We've probably fed over 15,000 meals starting tomorrow. It'll be 15,000. Um, so we start our breakfast at 2.30 a.m., and we have a overnight crew that comes in and uh, does about a thousand tacos, breakfast tacos. Uh, and those go between UT Southwestern, um, the VA or Parkland. It just really depends on where the need is. And then uh, we have a mid-shift crew come in and do box lunches. So we do vegetarian, shrimp, uh, chicken and a beef. And it's really just like a really nice hearty box lunch that they can either eat cold or heat up later if they have a chance. Um, and it's just been really overwhelming and incredible to see the reaction. Um, you know, the first couple of days, it was just nonstop tears, just from getting the reposts or the emails or the phone calls, like, you know, you fed my daughter, you fed my aunt, my cousin works there. It was just uh, really overwhelming. And we've just been really grateful and thankful to have the, the work to do and um, just the really generous donations that we've been given. Mm. Yeah, and I know for me too, like she was saying, just like it, that feeling of giving to somebody who's you know in need and, and our frontline workers, whether they be in hospitals or, or you know firehouses, wherever they wherever they are, they are you know pretty much laying down their lives on a daily basis to be around the the sickest of people, um, you know, and and really just take care of them, nurse them back to health and. Uh, you know, but they're the ones that are putting their, their lives on the line every single day, you know, walking into a room that they don't know if they're going to contract the sickness that, uh, that, you know, individual has, uh, and they're willing to do that. And so we just felt the least, you know, that we could do is partner up with an amazing, uh, you know, kind of initiative like that, um, and just do whatever we could just to bring just a little bit of joy, um, to their, you know, lives on a daily basis and just know that they have a warm, hot meal. Uh, that we have taken all the precautions to make to know that it's 100% safe for these individuals because they can't afford, you know, to be sick. Uh, they are taking care of the sick, so they, you know, don't have, 
uh, the luxury of, of uh, you know, being susceptible to any of these things. So we just tried to make a bunch of nutritious meals, like AQ said, um, you know, full of veggies and, and proteins and uh, carbs that are going to keep them going throughout the day and give them energy. Uh, and that's really been our uh, kind of heart for for those people. So, um, you know, it's it's obviously been a hard time for the restaurant industry as well, obviously, with just this whole shutdown. However, we are thankful that, you know, we still get to be with our loved ones. And so for us, it was more of just like, what can we still do um, as shut down as we are to keep, uh, keep you know, the love being spread? Uh, you know, people come to restaurants for a great time to feel uh, good with their loved ones. And so we just said, how do we take it beyond our four walls? Um, just like AQ and uh, everybody who's doing over there at Jose on Lovers. So, Well, I, I truly want to thank both of you all and your restaurants for what you are doing for the community. And, and so well needed. And what a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. So we have a wide array of margaritas at Jose on Lovers, but Carlos here is going to be making a spicy margarita, which is one of my favorites. And you can follow online uh, at home if you'd like. Let's take a look use some cucumbers to make it spicy we want to use uh, fresh serrano peppers the spicy habanero bitters so this is really spicy so we're going to use just one dish but we make this seed of a crusade basically it's just white pepper infused with sugar and water lime juice two ounces of the tequila blanco So thank you everybody for your support during this time when everyone here needs it the most. And we have some other people here that would like to say thank you as well. So we here at Mariano want to thank you guys for your continued support during this pandemic. We hope to see you guys very soon. And we are continuing with our curbside service. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you Dallas for your support. Thank you everybody for the support. Thank you. Thank you, Dallas, for your support. Thank you, Dallas, for all your support. Thank you, Dallas. Dallas, for your support. Thank, Thank you, Dallas. Dallas. Thank you, Dallas, for your support from your local favorite, Meso Maya. Thank you, Dallas. Thank you, Dallas. This has definitely been tougher times than we ever expected in the restaurant industry. However, it has been very heartwarming as well. And I agree with you. It, it's probably the toughest time in my whole career to see what's going on. And it is heartwarming to see so many people helping out. And once again, thank you, Julian. You and your dad are doing so much. So, but then let's hear another live song now from the Castro Band. Hey, we're back. Thanks Margarita Mile and Visit Dallas for letting us be a part of this fun night. Again, we are Castro. You can find us online at all socials at Castro the Band. And we've got one more song for you guys. This is the title track off of our debut EP. It's called Diamond Dreams. We own these streets like we're royalty with empty pockets and worn out jeans. Living our lives like we're kings and queens We're running wild on these diamond dreams Well, I got a fast car, but most days it don't stop But that paint shines just like new And I got dumb friends, but man, I love them Cause there ain't a thing for me they wouldn't do Always talk about how we'll get out But really we're happy just hanging around We own these streets like we're royalty With empty pockets and worn out jeans Living our lives like we're kings and queens Cause we're running wild on these diamonds A mansion, a 
is made of apartments And you can find me in 23A We climb to the rooftop Forget what we don't got Yeah, we wouldn't have it any other way and We on these streets like we royalty With empty pockets and worn out jeans Living our lives like we're kings and queens Like we're royalty With empty pockets and worn out jeans Living our lives like we're kings and queens We're running wild on these diamonds We on these streets like we're royalty With empty pockets and worn out jeans Living our lives like we're kings and queens We're running wild on these diamonds Absolutely amazing. Thank you, Jason and Michael. Miss you both. Can't wait to see you soon. And we appreciate you sharing your talent with us on Cinco de Mayo. And uh, the moment that Dean and I have been waiting for, for uh, our own attempt at making an original music video. And let me just say, Dean, had I known this shutdown was going to happen before we took that time to have drinks at my place and your place in La Ventana, I, I mean, I definitely didn't like take it for granted and enjoy it every minute, but I feel like I would have like enjoyed every minute even 10 times more knowing what we know now. Isn't that the truth? And to have Noah, who was playing guitar with us, just walk up and he goes, I have a song for us. <laughs> and I was like, oh, great. You know, this is going to be good. It was fantastic. And your guitar playing was even more fantastic. But well, I Noah, learned from the best, so. <laughs> well, and Noah knocked it out. And wasn't that just a great moment? Just to, the three of us just playing along. And, and it was really original time in the, in the sync of that whole period. I mean, yeah. we, we didn't know the song. And Noah just took off, and we just followed him. And what a great tune. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We'll have to do it again sometime when everything reopens and this whole shutdown is over. <laughs> please, please. That's great. So, Dean, let's have a look at the world premiere of our Margarita song. Please. <laughs> let's do this. In front of all these people. All right. <laughs> hey. You fellas mind if I join you for a song? Sure. sure. Is it a margarita song? It is. It's a margarita mile song. We love margarita, margarita songs. songs. Right. I need guidance. <laughs> I needed it my whole life. <laughs> this tequila never goes out of stock. This margarita. Oh. It started in Mariano's. Just a moment frozen in Oh, it's me? Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm asking. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Run and roll. It was a gift. All mankind. The masks of mother. Legacy of life. Over a hunt. Yeah, all the margarita mine. You can taste the Dallas style. What am I? What are we doing? <laughs> That's the What's my I, I don't even know mine after this. Sitting on a patio. Don't it make you want to go? Jules. I like Jules. The Texas time. The margarita. The and the margarita. <laughs> Tequila and salt. Where's my drink? 
Here we go. I'm just kidding. Born real tall. And a little wild. God. To live on Texas time. In, in Mexico. She'd almost had it. Second line. Tequila and salt. Margaritas here in Dallas. Wow. Born oh, really? <laughs> Please say that was good. Hey, <laughs> I thought it was good. <laughs> oh, man. To all of those that are joining us live, we'd love to know how you're celebrating this amazing holiday. So just let us know in the comment section. So I know our friends have been having some fun. Rachel, what's going on over there? Thanks, chefs. I don't know about y'all, but I'm really getting into this puzzle craze. I know Visit Dallas and the Margarita Mile have created some awesome virtual puzzles for y'all to enjoy at home. So we're gonna check in with some fans as they try to play along in a little competition. Check it out. All right, Father, Son, puzzle time. You know I'm gonna win, but I love you anyway. Mm. Alright, it's on. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just drag them in here. Corner piece in. No. Come on, man. This is, we did a thousand piece the other last time. Nope. Oh. 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 That's now. Yeah. You keep saying there we go, but then I don't have anything. Connected. I'm, I'm connecting, dude. I got all these other ones in the way. Done. Yeah. I'm almost there. <laughs> I got it. I did it. See? Congratulations. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey man. Hey. See that? Come on. I'm tired of always winning. Drinking margaritas and doing a puzzle? Ugh. That sounds like tough work to me. Exactly what is going on? so impressed with everyone's creativity and how they're showing off and celebrating America's official Cinco de Mayo happy hour with us here at Visit Dallas and Margarita Mile. Be sure to leave your comments below and let us know how you're celebrating. Remember, when you're enjoying margaritas on the mile or not, do not drink and drive, always drink responsibly. Dallas is the birthplace of the frozen margarita machine. And although I wish I had one in my house, I don't. I do love a good frozen margarita, but I always feel like when I did them at home, they always ended up a little bit watery, and that's because we always add ice to our blender. So I've got a little bit of a hack for you that should give you a little bit more of that restaurant feel. So what we're gonna do to start is we're going to create these little like flavor ice cubes basically that we're gonna freeze and then we're gonna use that as an ice replacement and mix with our tequila. So I have uh, two thirds a cup fresh squeezed lime juice, and then I'm going to add half a cup of blue agave. If you don't have blue agave at home, just feel free to make a simple syrup, um, which is just ha half water, half sugar boiled down. So I'm just adding that right in to half a cup. And then we're gonna top it off with um, just a little bit of orange liqueur, because why not? So uh, a third a cup of orange liqueur. Perfect. There we go. And then we're just gonna give that a quick little whisk. Get all that mixed up together. And then we're just gonna pour it right here into our ice cube trays. Sliding, 
steady, trying to get them as even as possible, knowing full well that I'm gonna come back at some point, and knowing full well that they're all going into the same blender anyways, but just to get an even freeze. Perfect, and into the freezer it goes probably for about three to four hours. All right, now that we have our orange liqueur cubes in the freezer, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill one with just a simple limeade mix. That way, instead of just using ice for that additional frozen feel, it's um, just lime concentrate instead of just that watery flavor. So I'm just gonna give these a quick little fill, and then we're gonna put these in the freezer for about three to four hours. All right, so our ice cubes are officially ready. We're just gonna start off with um, the ones from the orange liqueur mixture. And I'm just gonna put those right in the blender, just like this. And then we're just gonna do um, a half a cup of tequila, four ounces, just right in the blender. Just like that, perfect. And then we're going to get this thing a quick little rip and go. All right, so that should give us a nice blended consistency. Oh yeah, that's great. And then all we're gonna do is just add a couple more of these uh, just solid limeade cubes. I'm just gonna add about five at a time according to what I think might be best. All right, that looks just about perfect. So into the glasses we go. Oh, love that. Can't go wrong. Cheers. I hope everybody's enjoying your drink tonight on America's official Cinco de Mayo happy hour. I know I am. We're sending our cheers from us to you. that some of our fans decided to take on that Nailed It challenge and see just how good they can be at that sunburst lime garnish. Let's take a look and see how they're faring. Each contestant is going to have two minutes and at the end of two minutes, you will have it on the glass and either you nailed it or better luck next time. On your limes, get salt first. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. These knives are sharp. Don't cut yourself. Ooh, watch your fingers. Do not cut yourself. That is not oh. the plan. All right. We've got Amy and Solange. Oh Dick my gosh. And Emily. I can't, I can't see the lines. Okay, well, where did I cut? Oh, tiny. This is really hard and it's, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Time check, please. A minute 30. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just got it in my eye, like really. <laughs> This is so sad looking. This oh. is pathetic. I don't know that I can get it. One minute. No! What? It's not going back on the line. Come on now. Did everyone cut the base like they should have? No, I didn't. I did uh -oh. not. Better think about that. Shoot. Yes, yes, yes. Uh. Get this. I cannot yeah. spill this precious margarita. I can't. Stick it on there. Oh, <laughs> I broke mine. <laughs> yes! Done! Okay, 20 seconds. <laughs> Got Stop. this. It's like burning my hands. Pop it up a little bit. Yes, I did it. I got like one little... Well, one little it happens. Uh, you know, mine doesn't look that. Five, four, three, two, Hey, oh. <laughs> <Solange>. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> <Solange is> up. 
<laughs> well, cheers, y'all. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. I have an but that's okay. That was quite the nail biter. Thanks for joining us today on America's official Cinco de Mayo happy hour, hosted by Visit Dallas and the Margarita Mile. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I know my belly is full of tequila and I'm ready for a delicious Mexican dinner. So I'm signing off from the Margarita Mile headquarters. I hope you're all out there staying safe and having fun. Back to you, chefs. There you have it. That was so much fun. And Julian, thank you for sharing and drinking with me here on Sink in a Mile and everybody being able to join us. This was so much fun right here in Dallas, Texas, home of the frozen margarita machine. So, and Dean, you know what? I wouldn't have wanted to spend this with anybody else but you on Sink in a Mile here with all of our friends. So definitely this is gonna be a Sink in a Mile for the books for me. Happy to share it with you. And so all I have to say is stay well and salut. Salute, brother. Salute, everybody. Great to have you on board.